Well, hey everybody. Um, I'm not sure how well you can hear me. Uh, hold up. Actually, I always keep music going when I'm in the kitchen. Now, I already have this recipe up online through Nebo in their tutorials. However, I thought I'd give you a special treat. And considering I'm actually making this for dinner, you can be rest assured that I'm not going to mess this up. So, what do we have for you today? This is my own recipe that I improved on my grandpa's old recipe, which I have named Bell's Macaroni Mayhem. Reason for the name? Looks perfect in the casserole dish, and as soon as you take it out and put it on your plate, it falls apart like a pile of whatever. So, I thought the title was fitting. Now, typically I use a 9x13 casserole dish. You are going to also need, I put it in a bowl now because I think it's a little bit easier. You're going to want a whole pound of Mexican blend cheese, and I mean blend, not style. And you're going to want a whole pound of Italian style or blend cheese. And these two do go together. I know you wouldn't think so, but it does. You're going to want butter. You're also going to want diced tomatoes or whole if you want to crush them. Regardless, you still want to crush them. Now, what I'd recommend, take the tomatoes out, put them in a dish like this. You're going to drain out the liquid. Put that back in the can. Mix in a good bit of ketchup because that is going to be the last thing that goes on before the foil. Now, before we start cooking, what's the first thing you always do? If it's going to go in the oven, you preheat it. 350 degrees on bake. Okay? Now, the first step in this is, of course, the pasta. See, when I say macaroni and cheese, a lot of people seem to think that it's the instant stuff. Or doing a box of macaroni and just putting it on it or something. No. When I say macaroni, I actually mean homemade macaroni. Now, when you do this, you're going to want to do a pound. I usually buy it in boxes of two pounds, mainly because it's um, more convenient. Uh, that way you're not having to buy a bunch of one pound boxes. Um, easier stories are to do. Now, when you cook your macaroni, only do it for half the time on there. Now, that might sound a little weird, and you're probably thinking, well, it's not going to be done when, it's, uh, when you go to eat. Actually, it will, because this goes in the oven for an hour and a half. Now, by cooking the pasta only halfway, you're actually ensuring that it will be able to absorb the juices from the rest of the recipe and the dish and give it more of a wholesome flavor when you bite into even just the pasta. Okay? So, um, you can use pasta, spoon, fork, or what have you. It's really up to you as to what you utilize. Um, this is typically the kind that we use here. It's easier, it drains, it's made for it. <laughs> now, you don't want it to have a solid coating on it. And I mean, if this is just for friends and family, they don't mind you handling it because you've washed your hands, you can do what I'm doing. If not, use a spoon. Me, since I'm only cooking for my husband and my father and myself, it doesn't really matter. And we do this all the time anyways. It doesn't bother us. So, we'll do that. Next, what you want to do is take a little bit of butter. And it doesn't matter, you know, if it's perfect or what. You just break off small little chunks, drop them here and there, but make sure it's enough that it's going to help keep your pasta from sticking to you better. Now, you're probably wondering, why not just coat the pan? Well, because this actually goes into both layers, and it's kind of hard to coat the second layer. So, keep it simple. Um, and if you find that there's a gap missing, and you have a large piece, break it. Okay. Now, the other part that I always find. Cheese. What you're going to do... Let's see if I can't get the light in a little bit. Sorry about the glare. Okay, so, to get it by the handfuls, and, you know, you're going to want this to be a good solid layer. Um, 
you make them pretty much just dust it across the top and stuff. Um, my grandpa used to do it where he'd actually put the cheese on first and then the butter. But what I found was I was constantly having butter sticking to my hands. Now, why on earth would it stick to my hands? Well, excellent question. Because when you get it leveled out, you want to press it down. This will help make sure that when you put the top layer on, it doesn't just run off the top. So. And you kind of have to eyeball it if you use a container for your cheese like I am. Usually I don't do that. But I figure for all intents and purposes, and to save a little time for you and for me, that it'd be a good idea to just do it this way. Um, so for me to eyeball this, I mean, I've done it enough, but you pretty much have to go by what you're used to. Uh, so You want that pretty handy. Now, I probably messed up. I don't know if this is supposed to go over the macaroni or not. I personally don't remember. It's been a couple of weeks since I've made it. It really doesn't matter if you do this directly over the pasta or if you do it directly over the cheese. Um, personally, it's probably better if you do it over the pasta just because it's something that will keep it moist. But, you know, it's up to you. Um, I guess at the end it pretty much all falls together in place. Now, you see, you know, it's kind of a messy but kind of even coating. And then, just salt and pepper it to taste. If you're on a low salt diet, then you might not want to salt it. Um, you can also use white pepper with this. I don't really know if there's any real difference in taste, but some people say that it is. I don't know. Okay. I use regular brown pepper. Or black pepper or whatever. Okay. And you'll do your second layer. Putting the laundry beep in the background and doing this at home, not in a professional kitchen. Um, now one little tip for you, um, if you ever find that your pasta sticks, whether it's this or with spaghetti, is you actually want to make sure that uh, you put olive oil and salt in your water. This will actually help make sure that there's um, minimal to no sticking. And you see that gives it a wonderful coating. Um, my husband is staring at me as though it's the weirdest thing he's ever seen, but... It's delicious. <laughs> see? It's not just me saying. But let that be up for you to decide after all this is just a tutorial. Um, okay. Now, you don't exactly have to use all the pasta. Usually we munch on a little bit afterwards, but it looks like this is actually going to go pretty smoothly. So there's maybe a couple handfuls left. I'll just put some water in and boil it up. Yeah, don't ever be worried if you don't use all the pasta. It really doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you do or not. It's pretty much just one of those things where if you do, great. If you don't, oh well. Um, okay. I guarantee you, if I've messed up the steps on this, he's probably going to speak up because I've been teaching him how to do it. But that's a great thing about coming up with a recipe. You can kind of change it around a little. I mean, I wouldn't have my own if I hadn't done that. Okay. Alright, so 
after that, I believe I told you was the cheese. You try to use as much of the rest as possible. If your dish isn't quite big enough, then don't worry about it. Um, that's why I haven't thrown away the bags for the cheese yet, because I knew there was a chance that I'd probably have to put some back, but I almost never do. Um, I've had a couple of times that I've actually had to because of making too much pasta or using too many tomatoes. Um, it just, it happens. Um, and I just realized that I was right. The tomatoes are supposed to actually go directly on the pasta. Not that it makes a whole lot of difference either way, but you'll find out why here in just a minute. Okay, so that is all the cheese. You're going to want to flatten this out pretty well, but you're also going to want to go like this around the edges. And what you're doing is making kind of little dimples in that are going to help the top layer kind of seep in, actually. And yeah, it kind of messes up the neatness of it, but I don't really worry about that. You can just, you know, pour the rest of the tomatoes on top. Now, in the description of this video, I will post the actual recipe that I have online, so don't worry, I'm not going to leave you any. Now, with this being the last of it, that is why I went ahead and did the dimples. Now, I just said in the beginning, the juice left over, you mix with ketchup. And you actually drizzle that over the top. If you can't get it thick, don't worry about it. I mean, it's mainly just thickening it up a little bit from the really runny stuff that it was. Oh, and my husband's being wonderfully helpful because I forgot the spoon. Isn't that sweet? Thank you, babe. He's a good dog. Okay. I may have actually made a little too little, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, that's coming from someone who's not a perfectionist, necessarily. However, I take a lot of pride in this recipe. This was the first one I could ever truly call my own, so I try to get it as perfect as possible. And I hope you do too. Um, you remember one of the first rules about cooking. You first make a recipe, you follow it. Afterwards, then you can do it. Now, you measure over the foil before you tear it. Trevor, calm down. Foil, not lightning. Dumb face is lightning. Trevor, stop it. And when you do this, what you do is you actually bring the foil around on the edges and then tuck it. So, kind of like a garden. Okay. And that's got that nice and set. I don't know how you'll be able to see this part. Now, some people will actually pull this part out. I don't exactly have to. It's pretty much up to you what you want to do with it. I really don't. When taking it out, I highly recommend it. Just keep yourself in the middle. Gloves are wonderful for that. It's actually called for that. Now, I use my phone for this part mainly because it helps keep it so that I don't have to worry. Set timer for 92 minutes. Set timer for 90 minutes. 90 minutes. 
That is one thing I've had pop up twice. Can you tell your phone to watch it for an hour and a half? They'll tell you, okay, I said I just remember it. A watch like phone will never boils. That is actually a pun off of the saying that a watch pot never boils. But, you know, they gotta add some comedy in there after all. So, this would be the end of the tutorial. Um, I guess I could uh, add on the last part, but by then dinner's probably going to be ready. So, you know. Enjoy. <laughs>